Hey everyone, this is Manly Bastro, and welcome back to Paranoiac. Previously, we got a good night's sleep, and by that I mean no. Day 6. There's only like one locked room left, if I remember correctly. We'll go to the kitchen first, and we'll be right back. Oh, okay. Whoops, that's not a key. That's a key to something else. For symbolically, anyway. It's dark. It's too dangerous to go ahead like this. You have a flashlight, still need to use it. The three girl dolls are lined up on the shelf, they all look handmade. Ben Ben! A large stuffed panda and chicken, they look handmade. There's a stuffed bear by the sewing machine, seems handmade. Stuffed alligator, it looks handmade. Stuffed pig, it looks handmade. Lion. Stuffed dog and chick, they look handmade. The scraps of cloth and yarn in the trash. Panda was hiding something. The stuffed panda has fallen over. There's something written on the wall. I couldn't see it behind this stuffed animal. In my diary. 2LNYZ4. Let's turn this light off. Snooping as usual. Two. L. Enter. Shazam. There's only one file. Diary. Let's see, I visited the gynecologist today. The doctor gave me a big smile and told me the infertility treatment must have worked. Apparently I'm two months pregnant. I was so happy I called him during work without thinking. Thinking, thankfully he was just as glad. I should contact my sister soon, too. Oh, I see. Left and right. I went to my sister's house and told her the news. Sure enough, she looked displeased. She accused me of having kids just so my rich husband wouldn't desert me. I'm not sure when she came to hate me so much. It must have been my mom and dad's deaths. And to think I'm grateful to her more than anyone for raising me. I was half driven out of my sister's house, but little Mickey came up to me and whispered congrats. It made me really happy. Panda complete. I've been making lots of stuffed animals lately. That enclosed with a baby. I want to meet them soon. If the baby's a boy, he might not want stuffed animals. I could give them to kids in the neighborhood instead. Everyone loves stuffed animals. I haven't felt any movement in a little while. I had an ultrasound and the baby wasn't moving at all. I never heard its first cry. It was a boy who looked just like his father. There was a funeral and a cremation. I'm scared to talk to him now. I'm certain he'll call me a killer, because it's my fault the baby died. My sister laughed at me over the phone. A thoughtless, brazen woman like you could be a parent anyhow, so it's for the best. That's what she said. Your mom sucks! He left. I can't move forward if you're with me. I wanted to raise a happy family with you, but you've gone insane. So he said, and so he left. All I have left is the house. The neighbors are spreading rumors that I'm a killer. Even news people on TV say I am. So do the stuffed animals I'm sowing. Everyone has it out for me. I'm surrounded by people who hate me. Everyone's out to kill me. I locked all the rooms, I hid all the keys. I talked to my sister and she called me crazy. A crazy person who should die. Even Mickey told me to die. I think I should die too. I wonder if even the first one about... How her sister talks to her, maybe even that was like a biased... Kind of perspective. 
Because, like, here she says, like, oh, everyone's telling me to die. And, like, obviously, you know, like, they're not literally telling her to die. We've even talking to her in the first place. So we don't know how far back this goes. I want to die. Jumped and broke my leg. People in blue clothes caught me. Then people in white clothes can find me. I finally made out of the white building. Now's my only chance. If I'm too slow, I'll be killed. The rope should be in the storeroom. Auntie. From the day of stillbirth to the day of she killed herself, I hardly met Auntie. I only heard from Mom that she'd gone mad. I didn't go to visit her. Mom stopped me telling me I shouldn't, so I didn't have the courage. But still, I wanted to see her. So I came to this house that day, and then... I didn't know until I read her diary. How Auntie slowly lost her mind. And... Chose death. I never said you should die. Even Mom may have disparaged you, but she never said to die. I didn't, did I? I'm sure I wouldn't have. Really? I really didn't say it. What did I say to Auntie? What did I talk about with Auntie? How did I treat her? What kind of person was she? What did Auntie's face look like? No, that's her face when she died. No, I don't want to remember that. That's right. Whenever I try to think about Auntie, I always picture this face. That's why I try not to think about her. Auntie liked to sew. She was good at piano. She liked to read. She was kind to me, her niece. I know information like that. But Auntie's face, voice, words, when we talked about what we did, I can't recall any memories. This isn't right. I should have lots of memories, but I can't remember a single thing. It's because I never thought about her. I'm sure I'm getting something really important about Ati. What is it? Remember, what did I think of Ati? I... Don't answer that door. Or do answer that door. Mr. Miura. Hello. Thanks for last night. So how did it go? Nothing happened, I assume. Sure enough. You don't believe me. Huh? I'm not really surprised that you don't believe me, but... But still, why would you be so awful as to take me back here in my sleep? Miss Takamura. Tell me if I'm a bother. You could've just told me, but this is just too cruel. Inside you're laughing at me, thinking I'm doing weird things because I'm depressed, and just pretending to be helpful. Miss Takamura, please calm down. What are you... What, are you going to make me fun of me again? Calm down, please! Didn't you tell me you were going home by yourself last night? Huh? Don't you remember? You woke up in the middle of the night and said you'd be fine to go home. Miss Takamura, what's the matter? Oh, do you need to use the toilet? I'll be fine now. I'm going back home. That was rather sudden. It's late at night. You should stay. Even if it's just across the street, it's dangerous. It's fine. After all, it is my house. Is she okay? Well, if she says it's fine, I suppose it's fine. That can't be. I didn't do that. I was sleeping all last night. Miss Takamura. There's something I wish to say about this monster and these events. I don't think you're lying, Miss Takamura. However, I can't believe that there's a monster in this house. If you were chased by a monster nightly, you'd expect some traces to be left. But as far as I saw looking yesterday, there was nothing of the sort. 
I also descended to the well, and there was no cave there, nor the hole you said you opened. That cat... It's true. So I started thinking. Could the monster you saw and the events you experienced all be a hallucination or delusion? Hallucination? Delusion? What does your depression come from? It may be your mother's hysteria. Or perhaps the stress of work. Or perhaps it's a sense of guilt with regard to Miss Psyche. Guilt. Toward my aunt. Miss Psyche became ill from the guilt of causing her child to die. She heard things, developed a persecution complex, wandered and screamed strangely. Perhaps it's the same for you. Are you seeing strange things out of guilt for not saving Miss Sayagi? That's not right. It, it wasn't a hallucination. I couldn't imagine it. But is there any other explanation? If you really are hallucinating, you need to be seen at a hospital. Not to disturb you, but I just don't want you to end up like Miss Sayagi did. Please leave. It's my problem. I'll handle it myself. Miss Takamura! Tell me, please. What do you really think is going on? So... Bad ending first? Just delusion. Maybe you're right, Mr. Mira. Maybe it is a delusion. I never quite considered it. I'll go to the hospital tomorrow. I feel like my depression is only getting worse, so, too. I'm glad you understand. I hope you get better soon. Excuse me. If anything happens, I'll come running. Yes, it's just a hallucination. That monster couldn't possibly exist. I'll go to the hospital tomorrow for sure. I take my pills for today. Pills here. I'm out of pills. It's okay. I may be uneasy for now, but I'll go to the hospital tomorrow and get myself checked. And I'm sure my fear and anxiety will get taken care of. It'll be okay. Hello. Oh, Minky, are you okay? What? You told me there was a problem and you wanted to go home. Did you take care of it? What was it anyway? If you can talk about it, tell me. <sighs> Miki, what is it? Are you crying? It's nothing. I was just a little lonely. Sorry for acting strange the other day. I see. That's fine, I suppose. Call if anything comes up. Well then... I can't tell her I'm hallucinating. If I do, she's definitely going to berate me like she did auntie. If I go to a hospital and get treated, I'm sure I can go back to life as normal, I'm sure. It's okay. There's no monster. There really isn't. I've realized it's all in my head. So I won't see a monster anymore. It's okay, it's okay. Crying. I'm hearing things. There isn't really a voice, because it's just me in this house. I'm just hearing things right. I must be right. Mm. 
Yes, you're hearing things. Actual things. No. This isn't real. I'm just... imagining it. Yes, just a delusion. Born from my guilt. Because... Because I... I let Auntie... I let her die. If I... had helped her, Auntie wouldn't... have killed herself. I killed... I killed my aunt. It was my fault. Auntie... Oh, it's the crawl mode. Novelist Miki Takamura dies mysteriously. Discovered by neighbor. Gouged wounds all over body. Suspected suicide. Now the circle repeats itself. This road. Come to think of it. I walked down here with Miss Takamura. It still doesn't feel real. We talked just a few days ago. I can't believe Miss Takamura's gone. Suicide is just unthinkable. She was so covered in blood, I'd sooner believe it was a monster's doing. But if she was under enough duress, maybe she could have taken her extreme to extreme self-harm. If it was suicide... Why did I show more concern for Miss Takamura? She told me all about her hardship, and I thoughtlessly deemed it a delusion. I didn't consider her feelings. I left Miss Takamura to die. If I'd helped her, surely she wouldn't have. Because of me, Miss Takamura. Yeah, see, it's a circle. Maybe it's my imagination? Bandoning. Alright, so let's go for the good ending now. There's really a monster! It's called depression. I can't even consider that. It's just hallucination or delusion. You can only say that because you haven't seen it yourself. It it really is a monster. Miss Takamura. Just leave, get out. I don't want to see you or anybody. Leave me alone. Pardon me.
That thing is no hallucination. I may be depressed, but I've never had symptoms like that before. Besides, I have my pills. Come to think of it, I have to take my pills yesterday. I should go do that. I'm assuming the lead up to this next part is gonna be a little similar. But if I remember correctly, I think we don't just sit there when the the body drops. These stupid pills. I keep taking them, but they don't help at all. I'm done with you. Hello? Oh, Miki, are you okay? What? You told me there was a problem and you wanted to go home. Did you take care of it? What was it anyway? You can talk about it. Tell me. Miki, what is it? Are you crying? Mom, help me, please. There's a monster in this house. It's trying to kill me. It's like goosebumps. It's like the monster in the house. Like, literally, that was the book that was called that. No, how to... Was it how to kill a monster or something? Same concept. The only one I can ask. Help me, please. Come get me. I want to go home. Let me go home. <laughs> Mom? I just knew you were crazy. Just like Yuriko. Tricked around my stupid delusions. I always thought you were like her. So we can prone to fantasizing. Of course you'd end up crazy, too. Mom? Don't call me again. That's what you'll say. I don't want anything to do with crazies. Just do whatever you want. Why don't you hang yourself like she did? I can't even tell if that's real or not. She won't believe me. What's true? I haven't gone crazy. It's not a delusion. There really is a monster. I have nowhere to run to, no one to depend on, but I haven't lost it, really. I have to prove it. I'll figure this out myself. I won't let that thing catch me. Crying. I hear crying. Where? Where is it coming from? What is this? It can't be. This shadow. No. Time to run. I have to escape. I have to run somewhere. Oh, I got low health. See, so see, if you mess up once, you're dead. Quick, hide in the panda! It's a dead end. There's nowhere to hide. No. Please, stay back. Stay away! Huh? Why is my name on it? Why do you always come to tell me everything? I don't care about any child of yours. Sorry, sister. But you feel the role of a mother to me. I just want to let you know. The child seems real lively. It's a rather late birth, so I was anxious, but... Unlike you, I'm a busy woman. Don't come to me about worthless things. I'm going to work now, so I'll ask you to leave. My mom's a dick. Oh, Miki, you're home. Hi, Mom. Has Auntie come by today? 
I'm off to my night shift. Go out and eat something with Yuriko. Here, take the money. See you later. Oh, it's little Miki. Long time no see. We don't have school for today. Yeah. Hey, is the baby going to be a girl? We don't know yet, but I get the feeling it will be. So I'm making them lots of stuffed animals. If it's a boy though, maybe he won't want stuffed animals. I don't think so at all. I'm sure any child would love something handmade by their mother. Do you think so? <laughs> Thanks. I know. I should make a stuffed animal to give you as a gift, Miki. Oh, but you're in high school now, so maybe you don't want a stuffed animal. Nah, I wouldn't, make, wouldn't want one made by you, Auntie. Is that okay? Of course. I'll be sure to make a cute one. Look forward to it. But if Mom found out, I bet she'd get really mad. It's alright. I'll be sure to talk with her. She's bound to allow me a gift to my loving niece, I'm sure. Thank you, Auntie. That's right. This stuffed bear. It was from Auntie to me. I was looking forward to it, but not long after, Auntie's child died. And then Auntie... I'm sorry. When you were suffering the most, I didn't help you. I was scared of Mother, and scared of you going mad. I let you die, Auntie. But, but, I always, always loved you, Auntie. Because you were good at piano, I wanted to imitate you. And asked Mama let me learn. I even became a writer. Because you loved books. And taught me about so many. I wanted to meet your child. And your gift for me. I was going to treasure it. Don't cry. It must have been hard all alone. You must have hurt so much. You hate me, don't you? Are you mad that I... that I let you die? I... With you, Auntie, I would go anywhere. I love you, Auntie. Mura. Miss Takamura. Mr. Miura. Oh, thank goodness. You've come too. Sorry, I was just so worried. You didn't answer the doorbell, so I came down here. The ambulance should be here soon. I'm so glad you came too. I shook you, but you wouldn't wake. How'd you get in my house? Miss Takamura. Are you crying? I remembered something very, very important. Because it was so sad, so painful. I forgot someone important, but I was able to remember. I was a weak child who couldn't do anything, so I couldn't help her. But I remembered I loved her all along. I'm very glad for that, so I'll be fine now. Because I remembered that even I can love others, and have someone who loved me. After that day, strange things stopped happening in the house. A psychosomatic doctor at the hospital was taken to check me and told me that I suspected I had schizophrenia. At this point, I don't know if it was real or a hallucination. But, now whichever one it was, I don't really mind.
Okay, don't think I'm forgetting anything. Mr. Miura, do you need something? Your love. Or, um, I, I heard you were leaving today, so I came to see you off. You really going back to your mother's? The situa situation sounded complicated. Yes, I figure I should go to the hospital often. And there's a doctor near home who's helped treat my depression. I'm sure the hard part is coming up. Just because I don't remember how I feel about my aunt doesn't mean my guilt is gone. In fact, maybe it's stronger. I need to clearly know my own feelings and face up to the sad and painful things. That's why I'm going home and getting help. Actually, I plan to have my mother and get counseling as well. Her hysteria is getting worse. Will that be alright? You said she was very harsh. I'm sure she'll yell at me if I tell her to go to the hospital. But as her daughter, I want to help her. Me, Auntie, Mom are all weak people. Auntie and I hurt ourselves over it. And Mom gets aggressive to cover her own weakness. At this rate, maybe we'll be headed for the same outcome as Auntie. That's what I want to avoid the most. So I think I'll persuade Mom and go to the hospital to give her. She's harsh and scary, but I care about her. I see. What is it? Oh, well, it feels lonely to be saying farewell so soon after getting close. Don't worry. Once Mom and I are doing better, I'll come back here for sure. R really? Yes. It's the house my dear auntie left me. I'd love to live here if I could. So I see. I'm glad. I'll drive you to the station. How many taxis come out here? Thanks a lot. That would be great. I'll be back soon, auntie. Character, novel. See, so Miki Takamura, age 25, job novelist, a gloomy woman with a lethargic error. College graduate, the bureau as a literature author, but flopped, and now writes serialized romance stories with hardly any romantic experience. Yet. Yeah. Fairly well known as an author, became depressed due to work worries, pressure from mom, and guilt over on suicide. Schizophrenia was only suspected, no official diagnosis. Two years after the game, she returns to her aunt's house. Shinji. Architectural designer. Yeah, so he is about a year younger. A bachelor from the apartment across the street. Melissa and positive and a little overbearing. Unable to do drafting due to an inflamed tendon, he temporarily out, of, out on paid leave. It seems no impotent to his everyday life, he's kept by Miki's strange aura. Two years after the game, he joyfully reunites with Miki upon return from her mother's house. Minako. Job nurse. After losing both parents during school, she gave up in college, found a job, and looked after her little sister. Was always nervous and diligent sort, but the pressure of supporting her sister gradually turned her hysteric, worsening after Miss Miki's birth and her divorce. Following the game, she starts seeing a psychiatrist sphinx of Miki's patient persuasion, and seems the relationship has improved some. Yuriko. 
Married at 33, got pregnant at 36, but was still birthed and her guilt led to mental illness. It worsened after divorce, she started to wander and make odd sounds, eventually hung herself in her home. It was a kind and gentle sort who dearly adored her big sister who raised her like a parent. Also, like Miki, was close with her, playing piano for her and suggesting her books. What the hell is novel? Oh, okay. Cool. Hey everyone, this is Manly Bass Hero, and that's it for Paranoiac, which is the, I think I already mentioned this, this is the first game in uh, kind of Uri's um, style of series. It's not connected to the Crooked Man, it's kind of like the Sandman, no, Sandman was connected, I forget. It was so, I, sometimes I mix it up, it's Mermaid Swamp is the one that's not connected. So it's like Mermaid Swamp, it's not connected to the other ones, um, but you can kind of see the foundations for where the later games kind of come in. And Paranoiac is... So remake-wise, I... See, I have a foggy memory of how the original was, but I'm sure the original was more gory. So... It's lost... I'm assuming it's lost a little bit of its schlock. The, the story is still the same, but it's lost a little bit of that kind of horror -y aspect for more of a serious aspect with the kind of art style and everything. And um, overall, you know, it's probably an improved remake. It's, like I said, it's a little bit less schlocky, but due to its subject matter, maybe the more serious kind of art style and tone and look um, and aesthetic kind of maybe fits it more. And... I actually do like Paranoiac, you know, it's it's a short, simple story. Uh, it's not as long as the Crooked Man or anything. Crooked Man, I think, is the best one out of the lot, still. Uh, but Paranoiac, I think, is a simple enough, straightforward story. It doesn't really need to be long or complicated. Uh, it's just, it's very complete. And, you know, it's a, it's a simple one about depression, and kind of depressional loop, and guilt, and how that kind of weighs at you, and then how it almost kind of follows you as a person. It reminds me of the ghosts. Especially with this new look they kind of gave him, that staticky thing. It reminds me of the ghost from uh, this horror movie called... I think there was a few of them that got for the static ghost. But there was one in particular that had more to do with depression. Even thinking about it. I remember it was scary. Because when I think about it, I get like little chills up my spine. Uh, I think it was Cairo. Or maybe Pulse or something. It's fairly old. But it kind of reminds me of that uh, movie. So, I dig, I dig the static ghost. It's interesting. It's interesting, needless to say. But not too much to say about. Like I said, it's a straightforward, simple story. Uh, I, I'm actually kind of glad to see it as a remake, so, you know, because it's kind of one of those under-the-radar ones. Because it's the first work, and it's it was the most primitive of the bunch. So, it's an improvement, like I said. It's overall. That's about that's about it. Yeah, that's all I can say. It's Paranoiac. Story is pretty much the same. But yeah, so thank you all for watching me play Paranoiac. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.